Hello and welcome back to 365 Days with MXM Tune. I'm Maya, a singer, songwriter, video maker, Oakland native, and a self-proclaimed internet addict. I'm also a big fan of history. I love untold tales, gross facts, and secrets, anything weird, dark, and funky from the past. Each day, I'm going to share a few of my favorite deep cuts with you, so let's take a look at today's stories. It's 365 with MXM Tune new facts every day so don't leave too soon i'm gonna teach you stuff no it won't be tough gonna go a year till you've had enough it's 365 today in 2009 Minecraft was released to the public. Now, over 10 years later, the style of gaming it pioneered is widespread, and Minecraft itself is a ubiquitous presence in pop culture. But at the time, it was completely new and groundbreaking. People had never seen anything like it. Minecraft was created by a Swedish video game designer, Marcus Persson, better known as Notch. At the time, he worked at a big game development company. Minecraft was a side project, one he'd work on off hours. He originally called it Cave Game, but thankfully he changed that before making it open to the public. The concept of Minecraft is deceptively simple, especially in its first iteration. It's a block-based building game. Players find themselves in a randomly generated map, rendered in now signature boxy graphics. There's not a real objective other than to explore, survive, and build things. Whatever you dig up or chop at becomes a resource block, cutting down a tree will give you wood, for instance, and hacking at the ground will yield dirt, dig further, and you'll get stone. You can use these blocks to customize the world and build structures, because it's all self-directed. Each game could theoretically last forever, especially since every world randomly generated in Minecraft is eight times bigger than the Earth. At first, Minecraft was modestly successful on gaming and programming forums. It mostly attracted tech and programming geeks, who liked the game's clever and inventive design. Taking feedback from the forums, Pearson kept rolling out tweaks and updates. Rather than working to release one finished product, for the first two years, he treated Minecraft as a sort of interactive work in progress, an enthusiastic collaboration between creator and fans. In June of 2010, Pearson released the first major update to Minecraft. Alpha, but it really leapt into the public consciousness a few months later, in August, with the release of the game's multiplayer survival mode. For the first time, you could actually play alongside your friends, voyaging together through the massive game world landscape. At night, you could fight off things like vicious mobs, the game's creatures, short for mobiles, like spiders, zombies, and skeletons, all of which can also be harvested for resources once they're dead. More than an open-ended mining game, Minecraft had morphed into an epic, sprawling virtual adventure. Minecraft became so popular that Pearson was able to quit his day job and focus on it full-time, eventually founding the now-legendary game company Mojang. With Minecraft as his chief project, Pearson could add even more updates, new mobs, new kinds of blocks, new things to craft. Its rabid fanbase grew bigger and bigger, and legacy gaming media took notice, propelling its popularity further. A huge moment came when the wildly popular webcomic Penny Arcade devoted two whole installments to the experience of playing Minecraft, marveling at how expansive and overwhelming the gameplay is. By the time of its full release, in November of 2011, Minecraft already had 10 million registered users. One of the things that makes Minecraft so compelling and addictive is the interpersonal dynamic it fosters. People will say it's more than a game. It's a place to hang out, to meet people, to create. A community, in other words. Particularly devoted players program downloadable mods to change elements of the gameplay, like unique mobs or texture packs to change the appearance of the blocks around them. On YouTube, some built huge followings by posting videos of their gameplay or showing off their most impressive builds. People have spent hours painstakingly recreating real-life buildings like the Taj Mahal, Hogwarts Castle, or even replicating the entirety of Disneyland. Plus, with the induction of in-game electricity, some built fully functional, sophisticated computing machines within Minecraft. It's hard to overstate Minecraft's cultural impact. It completely revolutionized the way we think of video games. Never before had a platform promised so much endless possibility, or allowed players so much freedom to experiment and explore. It also changed the way games are conceptualized and released. Rather than just rolling out one finished product, developers realized that they could openly, continuously tweak and update their products. 
Today, there are over 131 million registered users, and it's the best-selling video game of all time, beating out Tetris. Yes, really. In just 10 years of existence, it's been repeatedly named the most influential and best video game of the century and inspired countless people to get into coding and programming. But not everyone was thrilled by Minecraft's astronomical success. Notch, for one, quickly tired of fame and the demands that came with it. Fans would constantly barrage him with new ideas, complaints, suggested fixes, and requests. In 2014, he sold the game, and all of Mojang, to Microsoft for an incredible $2.5 billion. It seemed like he was truly, really done with it. Contacted by a reporter from the New York Times in 2016, he replied that he sold Minecraft to get away from it. He's probably the only person that feels that way. And now for today's music fact. Today in 2019, Tyler, the creator, released his fifth studio album, Igor, which would go on to become his first number one album in the United States. It was produced entirely by Tyler himself and featured appearances from a slew of star artists, including Solange, Playboy Cardi, Kanye West, and Lil Uzi Vert. The album was met with widespread critical acclaim and debuted at number one on the U.S. Billboard 200. Its huge success might have come as a surprise to Tyler, who put out a statement minutes before it dropped, instructing listeners, don't go into this expecting a rap album, don't go into this expecting any album. He also encouraged people to listen all the way through, no skips. That's probably because Igor is fairly conceptual, in line with the rest of Tyler's work. It unfolds as a tragic narrative about someone who's desperately in love, fighting to keep a relationship working, who then spirals into heartbreak and rage. It ends with him accepting the relationship's end and moving on. Igor, whose name references the gothic villain archetype, popularized in Frankenstein, serves as an alter ego, and he's referenced by name in Igor's theme, and what's good. Tyler actually intended the album's lead single, Earthquake, to be for someone else. He wrote it in 2017 for Justin Bieber, who passed on it, so Tyler tried to get Rihanna to sing the hook. He never heard back from her, and he ended up keeping it for himself. We should all consider ourselves lucky he did. And now for our final segment of today's show, I'm going to be going back into my own photo archives to see what I was up to on a May 17th in my life. On May 17th, 2019, I mentioned yesterday that I had just flown to Brooklyn, New York to start working on the masquerade, and I started working on the masquerade on May 17th, 2019. I was in the studio in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, New York. Um, and it was a very exciting day because I believe prom dress had just recently like got up on to like TikTok and then um they added it to the playlist Left of Center, which I was super excited about because Troy Savon was on the cover. It was a very exciting day. And I was also really nervous because I have a photo of myself crying here. No idea why I was crying, but apparently it was a very big day for me. There's a lot of things in my camera roll here. I have a photo of the studio I was working at, a screenshot of the playlist ad for Prom Dress on Left of Center. I have a video of me and Robbie messing around, playing things on the big speakers, video of me eating Chipotle, and multiple photos of me crying, um, but that's not anything new. <laughs> if I had a dollar for all the days that I have like covered on this podcast of trying to figure out what memories I have on any given day, and then looking and seeing that it's just photos of me crying. Oh God, I'd be a rich woman. Thanks for going back in time with me and remember to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. You can come back tomorrow for more stories from the past. And I promise I won't be just sharing about the times that I cried. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365.